Hello friends, welcome back to my channel XN and Protein X. In this tutorial video, I'll discuss about the signal peptide. So to know about the signal peptide, you have to know a little bit this history behind the signal peptide discovery. In 1975, the Grunter Blobel he found that the protein that transport to the different organelles of the cells it carries the specific sequence, specific localization sequence. And that sequence sequence is around 16 to 30 amino acid long. 16 to 13 amino acid long. And 1991, he awarded the Nobel Prize because of the discovery of the signal peptide. And that localization sequence that he found and that is responsible for transportation to the different organelles that specific sequence is called the signal peptide so the function of the signal peptide is pretty much similar to the to the parcel that deliver to the specific address so for example there is one parcel and the parcel cannot be delivered the parcel cannot be delivered if there is no postal address mentioned. So the parcel should be delivered according to the, the address that would be mentioned on the parcel. Right? Otherwise, it's not possible to deliver. So it's the same kind of things if you think here also in the signal peptide. Signal peptide is nothing else, it is a postal address that uh, postal address and how, what is the parcel then? So parcel is the, if you if you think uh, the similar kind of things. The parcel is here the protein. So parcel is a protein. So protein the, uh, this is a protein. This is a protein. And protein for the for the structure here. This is the C terminal and this is the N terminal. And signal peptides should be present in the N terminal of the newly synthesized protein and this signal peptide is very much important to present here and because of this kind of signal peptide the other kind of um, the signal recognition particle that is another complex that recognize that recognize this specific sequence and because of this sequence this uh, the newly synthesized protein can be delivered to the specific destination like for example the mitochondria nucleus or lysosome so this is how it works so signal peptide has different a uh, specific specific sequence so i'll i'll show you the the structure of the signal peptide so this is the structure of the signal peptide you see here there are four different part of the signal peptide so this is the n terminal n terminal and here there is um, one to five residues about the positive region and very much important part of the signal peptide is the hydrophobic region it should have the hydrophobic region like it must have otherwise uh, it cannot function so signal peptide is the uh, it contains the hydrophobic region that is the you see the um, hydrophobic amino acid should be there so you see the leucine and glycine is uh, the higher concentration of the leucine and glycine both are the hydrophobic amino acid and followed by there is also another uh, uncharged residue that is the 3 to 7 residues of the this amino acid and also there is one 1 to 6 residues about the negative uh, region so this entire structure of the signal peptide and also this is very much important that that signal this kind of signal peptide is uh, the if there is no unique signal peptide present or if the signal peptide is defective in any proteins so in that case the protein cannot be transported into the specific uh, location and for that there are there are some um, some very common disease it, it may arise like in the diabetes or parathyroid hormone so in both cases 
the signal peptide there is um, diabetes and and parathyroid hormone in both cases parathyroid hormone so in both cases there is some a uh, point mutation or defective signal peptide it found so this is why the insulin or parathyroid hormone is uh, there is deficient right so that because of that there are lot of serious issue may arise and also that's also in the in the laboratory the the recombinant protein production is also depends on the signal peptide so the recombinant protein concentration and also the recombinant protein output it very much uh, depends on signal peptide it is also the it should be very much optimized and unique signal peptide should be there otherwise the recombinant protein production is not possible so i will show you the how you find the signal peptide sequence from the ncbi site so for that you have to go to the ncbi site and i already searched one program the pt sorry pdl1 protein so this is a pdl1 uh, PD protein you see here and uh, this is how is a protein ncbi protein and also if you scroll down a little bit so this is a protein pdl1 protein pdl1 pdl1 protein all right so if if we scroll down a little bit and if you look at carefully here you can find some important information here so this is you see the signal peptide is 1 to 18 so what is this 1 to 18 1 to 8 this is the sequence of the from 1 to 18 residue of the amino acid so go further little bit down and this is the the pdl1 protein structure you see the pdl1 protein structure so according to this information so from 1 to 18 so 18 is from here so this is the signal peptide sequence so if people they gonna they gonna try to um, purify this kind of pdl1 protein in the lab if they produce a recombinant protein so their plasmid content this signal peptide sequence so if the plasmid is there so plasmid content it should be signal peptide and this signal peptide should be this one it may optimize or it may it may varies but it should have the signal peptide sequence all right so this is it guys i hope this video will be helpful and if you like this video kindly hit the like button share it and subscribe my channel thanks guys